All right, I'm going to um, throw a little pottery today, and uh, what I'm doing is I make, I make my own clay and I store it in this big garbage can. So I, I don't know how many pounds this is, but there's just tons of clay in here, and I'm just going to grab a great big handful and then wedge it down and bring it over to the potter's wheel and start throwing some pots. Normally, I can do this on any given day. Uh, you can come home from work and throw some pots, or on the weekends throw pots. We have a couple of kilns here in the studio. So we can do some electric firing down here. And then in order to do glaze firing in a gas kiln or recu firing, there are a couple of different spots that I can go to where I can use other people's kilns. All right, over here I have a big bed of plaster, which is what I use for my wedging surface. Let me scrape off some of the old clay dust. Don't like that getting stuck in my clay and creating little lumps. <clears throat> and then the wedging process is really just a matter of kneading the clay and working all the air bubbles out and sort of getting the clay body consistent. I do mix my own clay and it's a mixture of basically scrap that uh, whenever I have leftover clay I just throw it into a bin no matter if it's porcelain or earthenware or a raku body. Any type of clay that's high fire goes into the bin and I remix it down so I have a very pale sort of half porcelain half stoneware clay body that's got some fiber in it for plasticity and has some grog in it for a uh, nice thermal shock value helps with shrinkage and cracking and makes for a really good raku body when you're doing primitive firing. When I wedge the clay, I want to look for a uniform color. Occasionally what I might do is stop, take out a wire tool, cut the clay in half, and then look to see if there's any difference in color inside the clay. If there's still a difference of color, then I have to continue to wedge it. Usually 70 or 80 rotations of the clay creates a pretty good wedged clay body. I'll do this a few more times. And then I'll create a couple of balls of clay and start throwing. Twenty years ago when I was in a university class, my professor used to say that as long as you're creating a nice duckbill shape when you're wedging, that's the way to do it. So there's sort of this duckbill that I put into my clay. Last winter, right after Christmas, I tore a muscle in my arm and I had done a lot of throwing and a lot of ceramic work towards the end of the year and I sort of overdid it so I had to take a break for a while because my right arm was really sore and just couldn't handle this type of repetitive motion working with clay or carrying heavy amounts of clay. So I'm actually a little bit rusty. I haven't been down in the studio in a bit been doing other things like digital artwork and painting and teaching. All right, that looks good to go. Last thing I'm going to do is take out that wire cutter again, cut this into some different size chunks. Do some smaller stuff, at least to begin with. Smaller stuff's easier to throw. If I'm a little bit rusty, the smaller stuff it's less likely to fail. Do you want to see if you can get it from